And I want to now welcome Erica to the phone. Erica, you're having difficulty with, is it your daughter? No. Oh, okay. With relationships. Okay. And I was asking, um, when you grow up like in an alcoholic home. Yes. And your father is an alcoholic and you grow up and you have relationships with men and they all seem to have a similar personality as your father. Yeah. And I have just stop dating because I want to attract healthy men, but I don't know how. Okay, so you need to do some detective work for with yourself, don't you? If yeah. I kept attracting the wrong men, which is very, very common, many times we are so familiar with what we grew up with that even though we've vowed to ourselves, I will never marry anyone like my mother or my father, you end up in the same type of situation because you're with the person and some dynamics are taking place, but you need to know yourself. What do you know about yourself that would uh, draw you to people who have similar characteristics to, in your case, is it dad in your case, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Well, I tend to be controlling. um, And I want to be able to dominate the male. Okay. So that I can control the the relationship. Tell me more about that. Where does that come from? <laughs> Give me a story from your childhood that just rings true to that. Why did you want to control the male? Why did you want well, to be? Yeah, go ahead. I could never. I. It was a hard thing to be able to see my father, and to have a relationship with him because aside from his job, he had other jobs. So I had very little time to be able to see him. And I used to stay up very late. Uh, And, of course, he would go drinking to the bars. So he'd come home really late. And sometimes I would sit on the front porch with my brother, and we'd wait and wait and fall asleep on the porch. And he'd never get home. And my mother would put us to bed. So days, weeks would go by before we would actually spend time with him. So very, very sad. You're so hungry for time with your dad as a little kid. And you and your brother shared this, that you would just be going, instead of just writing him out of your life and just saying the heck with him, if he's not valuing us, give up on him. Instead, here is a father who could have had two lovely kids who adored him, and he's making them beg for crumbs of affection. And he's running his own life into the ground if he's drinking and at the bar. And it sounds like he was working. I don't know if he had a, just a job where, that he didn't like or a career. So so you're saying that it was very sad. So how does that lead to you being in a relationship with a gentleman now and feeling like you need to control them? Well, I always want to know if they love me, if they care about me, are they... You know, do they like me? You know, what is it about me that they like? And are they going to stay with me or not stay with me? I'm oh. always wanting to know how what their emotions are towards me. And so they experience that as what? Well, I guess, like, I'm very, I'm always constantly calling them and where are you, what are you doing? But what I do also is I control myself. I won't call them. Yeah, And so they're, they're always calling me, where are you, what are you doing, this and that. So I do both things. Well, I call them a lot or I just don't call them at all. Okay, so you've tried two different strategies. You, you're, you have what sounds like a fundamental uh, feeling that your father left you with, which is, am I lovable or not? That Just that doubt that, am I a lovable person? If Dad loved me, he would have come home earlier. He would have hugged me. We wouldn't have to sit on the porch and wait for him. And Mom wouldn't have to put us to bed. And he would he would try, you know, leave us little notes or bring us little toys or uh, show us how to do something interesting, how to, I don't know, build a birdhouse or something. And my guess is you didn't have a, a lot of those wonderful experiences as a child with Dad, right? Right, and so you have in cognitive therapy. You would what? Um, do you know? Do you know what cognitive therapy is? No, ma'am. Okay, it's a type of therapy where you focus on doing similar to what we're doing here. Your thoughts are going to really 
drive your behavior and your emotions. So if you're thinking, maybe I'm unlovable and you've got some doubt about that, then that's going to drive you to want some reassurance. And so you have a strategy. One strategy to get reassurance is to just ask the guys, what are you thinking? Do you like me? What do you like about me? You're wanting evidence that you're important to them both to feel important for yourself, I'm assuming, and to evaluate them. Are they people that are worthy of having in my life? Right. And then it also sounds like you you don't trust them. Kind of the theme right. of is dad at the bar. And so you have to keep tabs on them. So it's like you're you're constantly vigilant and you're always on edge feeling, oh my God, what if I get proof that I'm unlovable from them? You know, yet another man in my life hurts me. And then another strategy you have is almost like throwing up your hands and just playing hard to get. And then they call you and that gives you some reassurance, but then you feel like a cold person. Yes. So the question to give yourself is, do you love yourself? And if you could collect evidence, maybe two or three things a day, of things that you like in yourself apart from anybody else in the world, and jot them down in in a book to the point where you gain some confidence and a growing conviction that I'm a lovable person. And Dad should have loved me. I can't do anything about it now, and he's not my issue. My issue is to find a wonderful value in my life, another man who I don't have to play games with. But you need to feel that you're a lovable person. The only person, the most important person to convince yourself is you. Other people can give you feedback too, but fundamentally it's yourself. That's why we call it self-esteem. Then you need to build trust that there are men who are lovable, who don't run like your dad did away from the family. And so you want to collect examples of men who are lovable. People you've known, whether it's someone you worked with or somebody that you saw on TV or in a movie, a father who is a a good dad as a role model, or a man who's a good husband. And collect good examples, because that will help in your mind, that will help challenge that idea that there are no good men out there. Um, you can go to a website, academyofct.org, Erica, yes, ma'am. Uh, or my website, drkenner.com, and that, the, it'll give you, you can find a cognitive therapist that may be able to help you through this. But those are some ideas of how to, to value yourself and then to see that there are better men out there so that you gain more confidence when you get into a relationship. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Erica. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. And coming up, do you have a toddler who has started to climb in bed with you and you don't know how to say no to your little one? Or maybe your kids just don't clean up after themselves and it drives you crazy and you get so angry at times that you're tempted to toss all this stuff out in the garbage. What tips will help you resolve some of the daily frustrations in parenting? I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. It's, it's almost beyond belief. She's funny. She's smart. And I would never believe a girl as beautiful could have such a great personality. Ugly duckling syndrome. What? She probably didn't get pretty till high school. Thus, the personality had to develop out of necessity. It's an evolutionary thing. You know what? I bet you're right. Mm -hmm. She's way too pretty to be so nice. Mm -hmm. And it is possible to be pretty and nice without the ugly duckling syndrome, meaning to have tended to your looks, whatever your looks are. You can always make them a little better. Not that you have to always uh, look glorious. If you saw me right now, I'm sitting here in just some comfy clothes. Uh, but it, it is nice to tend to your looks because there's a psychological component to valuing the way you look, valuing your health, valuing your fitness, valuing the way you dress, and not being obsessive about it, but enjoying it, coming at it from a good perspective. And that was from Shallow Hal. And I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and my show is The Rational Basis of Happiness. I'm a clinical psychologist here to take your calls and questions on any difficulties you're having, whether it's with 
uh, your looks or feeling that you want to aspire to good things and don't quite know how or having relationship difficulties and wanting to at least be pointed in a direction to help yourself and help uh, resolve issues. Those are the types of things we talk about. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Dr. Ellen Kenner. Emotions vary not only in type, but also in intensity. From mild anxiety to severe panic attacks. From mildly sad to seriously depressed. From mildly happy to exuberant. Hormones aside, the intensity of your emotions depend on the importance of the value at stake. If you are feeling a powerful emotion, the intensity indicates this is really important to me. If you sense that your emotion is too intense for the situation, ask yourself, what mistake mistaken interpretation am I making here? Did you blow your top when your partner was 10 minutes late? You initially may be thinking, if my partner is late, it means the whole evening will be ruined. Or, my partner doesn't care about me. Then do a reality check. Is this really true? Is anger the appropriate response, even if it is true? You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.